Honey, don't hang up. Uh, what do you mean you're not going to Las Vegas with me? What? Honey, we can work things out there. Vegas is very romantic. We can gamble. Hoover Dam is there. It'll be great. No, <laughs> no, you can't bring a guy named Dave. This girl's a major problem. What's this guy Dave got that I don't have? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Patty, sex isn't that important. It is not. It is not. Listen, how about for money? Will you come for money? I'll pay it like a... I can't... Well, wait a minute. That amount hurts me, Patty. I can't... You, <laughs> no, you know I can't raise that in this short a time. Huh? Well, think about it, all right? Look, I'll be at, at the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas. And you'll and call me there. All right. All right, good. I love you. H Hello? Hello? Dis <laughs> Disconnected, I guess. I, I should have known when she said, I'm seeing other people, one of them was a guy. Now I got to go to Vegas alone. You have any idea what that's like? Other people be there with other people having fun, and I'll be with me. If you know what that's like, you know what would be great is if you could be with me. Wait a... No, come on. You'll go. You'll see my show. We'll have a great time. And it'll be first class. It'll be a limo. Everything. Will you go? Great. Uh, you don't have... Do you have a car we, we could take to the airport? Maybe we can get the pilot to Buzz Patty's house. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you decided to come. You know, one of the great things about flying is all the free stuff they give you. And here's my little tip to you as an experienced traveler. Take everything they have to offer. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard flight 457 to Las Vegas. Please follow along on the emergency seat card in front of you. I hate flying. I'm probably just paranoid. In case of decompression, an oxygen mask will drop in front of you. Take the mask firmly in your hand and place over nose and mouth, breathing normally. The seat cushion can be used as a flotation device in the unlikely event of a water landing. Water landing? <laughs> We're going from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. What, are we going the long way? Enjoy your flight today. Your pilot will be Captain Hiroki Shahoji. We are going the long way. Come on, let's get our bags and we'll go right to the hotel. You believe this? They actually have gambling in the airport here. How you doing today, sir? How's your luck? When the plane goes down, I'll be up 140 grand. One of those high rollers. Hi. Hi. Your number, sir? Oh, uh, nine, I guess. Number nine. I just bought that bag. They must think that's me. This is it. We're gonna have a great time. Are you happy? Yeah, well, you're not Patty either. I'm not thrilled to death. Come on, with the Wheel of Fortune. Let's make one quick bet and go right to the room. Patty and I watch the Wheel of Fortune every morning on television. She comes over about 9 a.m. I'm so excited I finally get this spin. Hey, we got a winner here. Is there a, a, a D, please? There's one D. One D. I'm going to take a shot. Is it Florence Henderson? No. Oh, I knew that wasn't right as soon as I said it. All right, this is a kinky room. Look at this. There's a mirror above the bed. There's a jacuzzi in the room. Take your clothes off. Well, think about it. We just got here. I'm calling Patty. You know, I travel a lot, right? Here's a little tip for me to you as an experienced traveler. Wake-up calls, 
Worst way to wake up, right? The phone rings, it's loud, you can't turn it down. So what I do is I leave the number of the room next to me, right? And then it just rings kind of quiet, and you hear some guy yelling, What are you calling me for? And you go up and take a shower. It's great. <laughs> just don't ever do it to me. Dave? D Dave, uh, is, is Patty there, Dave? She, she's right next to you. Uh, uh, can I talk to her? No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't wake her, Dave. <laughs> Dave, don't wake her. I'll, I'll call back. All right, bye. You know, he doesn't sound like a bad guy. You know, it's better this way. You don't want to have women around when you're doing a show. It saps your energy. It's like boxing, you know, unless the woman says yes right from the start. Because it's the effort to get her into bed that wears me down. The four minutes of actual sex doesn't really bother me that much. Let's go down to the pool and let's forget about sex altogether. All right, so I'm playing Keno, right? I yeah. meet this girl. All I want to do is have a drink. Yeah. All she wants to do is have sex. I love it. Phil, we are talking major league sex here. Every way, every form, every conceivable way you can... Wait, I'm in good shape, right? Yeah, good shape. This woman, three, four, fifteen times 15 a night. Fifteen times, yeah. come on. Not only that, she brings over a girlfriend with a food processor and a garter snake. Are you kidding? No, it's amazing. Three girls, yeah. you should have called me. I was just with two. The most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Right? I love you. Oh, different four of us. You this know, thing. it's over 140 <laughs> degrees out here today, but it's dry heat, so it's okay. Here come one of those models they have by the pool. Hi. Hi. Today I'm wearing a very casual outfit. Short and top set. It's 100% cotton. It's available in our hotel dress shop and is only $75. Oh, it's very nice. I wish I had someone to buy it for. Oh, you don't have a girlfriend somewhere? No, I don't. How about Patty? And then she said, yeah, but I can't go because you're going to be with her. Telephone call for Mr. Rasham. You know, I think that model Rasham. liked me. I'm kind of glad Patty didn't come now. In fact, if she called, I don't even think I'd take her call. Telephone call for Mr. Shandling. And then she says, yeah, but not with my wife, you know, which is crazy. Yeah. That was Patty on the phone. Now she's thinking of coming. It seems to depend whether Dave can get off of work or not. <laughs> I've become friend of the couple. Oh, I've ordered a massage for us from one of those magazines so we can relax. Are you Gary? <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and what's your name? My name's Pleasure. French? No problem. Anything you want. Actually, I, I just want a massage. Very tense. That's all I want. How about a Hindenburg, huh? <laughs> Get that thing away from me. A Hindenburg. I... Oh, oh. We could play totem pole. How about we play pump the professor? Pump the professor? Yeah. Ow. Even <laughs> Patty wouldn't pump the professor. I, 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 there's really been a misunderstanding. I just need a massage. What's going to cost you a hundred bucks either way? Well, how about a couple tickets to my show and we'll knock off 50 bucks? <laughs> no way. You're the fourth person today who's offered me tickets to your show. Look, honey, here's my card. When you grow up and you want to ride the range, you give me a call. Ride the range? I haven't gone horseback riding since I was a kid. Girl's a tease, don't you think? One of the first things people want to see when they come to Las Vegas are the fabulous lights of downtown. There are 4,700,000 light bulbs on this street. Imagine what it must look like at night. Come on, I'll show you the casino. This is it. This is where it all happens. If you've never been in a casino before, isn't it great? You know how dead this town was before they put in gambling? Hi, I'd like to play uh, number seven for $10, please. My friend Chuck in LA gave me 10 bucks and said, put it down on number seven for me. This is exciting. Here's a little tip for me to you. Don't actually follow the movement of the wheel with your head because you get a little nauseous. Seven, winner. Seven! I won! I won! I won! This is great. $350? Now I'll play my friend's $10. There's a pretty girl. And I never know what to say to a girl like that. I don't know how to approach her, because, you know, I'm kind of shy. It's a, it's a problem most guys have. I... 
Aren't you Gary Shanley? Yeah, I am. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think you're so funny. Oh, thanks. I mean, you're so much cuter in person, oh, I too. Know. I mean, you're I know. adorable. Thanks. You're so vulnerable and yeah. sexy. Really? I'll bet you don't have any trouble at all meeting girls, do you? I mean, that's just a part of your act, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. I, mean, I have no here. trouble. Slammer and I are really big fans of yours. The Slammer? Oh, Gary Slammer. Shandling. How you doing, oh, Slammer? Yeah. It's a pleasure. Oh, Glad pleasure to, to meet you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're going to miss your show. We're going to uh, go back to our room and get it on now, but good luck. Oh, that, that's too bad. Nice to meet you. All right, nice to meet you. You don't know what you're missing. The Slammer. Jeez, go figure that. There's got to be some woman I can talk to, and I think I know who it is. This is a woman I can always turn to in a time of need. I love her, and she loves me. Beat it, Gary! I wonder how she knows it's me. How did you know it was me? Wimpy knock. Don't you have to use all your knuckles? Use my whole arm that time. You better get hormones. Can I come in for a second? Do I have a choice? God. Who's up to this time, Gary? I'm just not meeting anybody. I feel I can share this with you. Of course you can. Did you have trouble dating when you were dating? Never. Come on. Never. Uh, I was very popular. Men were crazy about oh, me, Gary. You're lying. Now, let me ask you this. You would think I would be meeting somebody. You know, we're friends, Gary. I don't get it. I don't get it. You are so good looking. You, you've got nice hair. Your eyes are great. You're affluent. You're fun oh, on a date. You've you got a great sense of humor. You make me feel better. You, no, you dress well. You're charming. You're tall. So you're someone you're like you, so you would go out with never. me? Never. You, you mean you would never go out with me? Gary, if I were the last woman on earth and you were a man, the answer still would be no. She always makes me feel better. What's the matter with women here? Don't they read? I don't understand this. There's no messages, there's no calls, no one's knocking. This never fails. I don't understand it. I hope the marquee is working. Honey, look at that. What's that, dear? Some guy's got his room number up there. It's Las Vegas. I'm calling Pleasure A. I'm ready to ride the range. Pleasure Aid, this is Gary Shandling. Listen, I'm, I'm really horny, and I have some money, and I just want you to come up and, and, and pump the professor. Get, and, pardon me? Dial 9 for an outside number? I'm, I'm very sorry. This just isn't going to work out. You know, there's no time for a woman anyway. There's 20 minutes to my show, what with the begging and all. So, uh, I'll see you at the show. I got you great seats. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Shandling. See, you're too hot. You're too hot. You're great. Well, let's start with this. Now, how many people have seen me before? Just applaud people who have seen me before. All right. There goes that material. Great. Uh, no, now, I write every day. Those of you who know me, I write new material every day, and I keep it fresh, so we're all right. So what do you think about this Watergate thing? I don't talk much about current events, if you know me. I don't get the newspaper anymore, because my neighbor just moved. And... I don't buy the paper. Now, here's a tip to you. When I do buy the paper, did you know this? I buy them out of the coin racks. They're cheaper. Did you know this, by the way? Yes, they're four for a quarter out of these things. <laughs> you don't take just one, do you? No. Then I went to the bank. Have you gotten your free pen yet at the bank? <laughs> these are free. You yank these. They pop right out. I got, uh, I got this. I got a desk calendar. I, uh... Yeah, you need a screwdriver to change the numbers, but they're free. I got a plaque that says Nancy, which looks great on my desk. 
<laughs> then I went to the laundromat because they have free clothes at the laundromat. Did you know this? <laughs> I love going to the laundromat because you see people wearing the last thing they want to wear. Isn't this true? <laughs> have you ever noticed they're wearing Bermuda shorts and a Nehru jacket? Am I great? And you're like, great. That's a very nice outfit you have. We used to shoplift. Did any guys do the shoplift salamis when they were kids? You go into a grocery store, you put one in your pants, and you walk out. <laughs> Wait a minute, because no one's going to stop you and go, excuse me, is that a salami in your pants? <laughs> and if they, <laughs> if they do, right, if they do, you just go, well, thank you very much. I'm pretty proud of it myself. Thank you very much. So who do we have here? How many people now, let's get to know each other. How many people from out of town applaud? All right, a lot of... A lot of people visiting. Who's winning money? Winning. <laughs> Losing. Yeah, I'm the worst. I start throwing my money out the car window about an hour before I get here, just to get warmed up. Take quarters, throw them out the window, pull the gear shift on the car. It's the same damn thing. <laughs> Have you gone up to the all-you-can-eat buffet yet to try to win it back? Have you seen those people up there going, I'll eat $700 worth of food if it kills me. Put some chicken in your purse, honey, when we go. Anybody play Keno? Now, why do you play this? It seems like they would just do better to give you a couple Valium and take your two bucks on that. This is not an exciting game. Just once, I would like that guy who calls the Keno numbers to say what he's really thinking. Am I right? He should go. 17, 24, here's another one you don't have, 9. There's one that's not even on your card, sucker, 87. The worst, the worst intercom that they have here. Okay, so you go into the restaurants, right? And they say, there's a little wait for a table. Sit down, we'll call you when your table's ready. Have you done this? You give them your name, you listen for your name over some cheap speaker. You never hear your name, right? What you hear is, so, honey, so. What, was that us? You, you go ask him, honey, you look stupid. Go up there, ask that guy. No, am I right? They never get the name right in these places. They should just describe the people, then we would know. They should go, the couple with the ugly children, your table's ready. <laughs> then we would know. They're calling you, ma'am. You want to cover those kids up? We're going to try to eat here. Thank you very much. Is that a cabbage patch, baby, ma'am? <laughs> the older man with his daughter. <laughs> sure, your table's ready. <laughs> then we would know. You're a good crowd. The king. I just started. Is it doing you well? I went to this place. I went to the Rainbow's End right here in Las Vegas. I had an avocado and wood sandwich and <laughs> some pigeon milk. And, uh, oh, it was great. I went outside and went to the bathroom on the windshield of my car. <laughs> this is a great thing. I'm saying to my friends on the roof, did it affect you guys at all? <laughs> And I'm sitting there, so it's different, right? All right, I'm sitting there, it's the truth. There's a woman on this side of me choking on a piece of food, which is funny enough in a health food store, right? And, and, and her husband is pounding her, and I'm saying, sir, I don't think in the face is gonna get that food out. <laughs> right on the back. And then there's a woman on this side of me, and she's breastfeeding her baby, which is, which, yeah, it bothers me, because I don't like seeing a kid get something I'm not. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Where's the line for this thing, kid? Come on, I got a meeting in a few minutes. It's weird. You don't know whether to look, am I right, or not look, or go next, or, or what? It's a bit... Is nursing a nicer term? Because she had huge nurses. It was unbelievable. It was like a hospital wing there, and... And the baby, he starts to cry as soon as he's taken away. Isn't this true? Because he knows it's 17 years before he gets that close to another one again. He's just getting into it, you know. They cut him off. He's going, oh, it'll be dinner and a movie next time. <laughs> you have friends that have babies and you go to their house and everything the baby does is adorable. Am I right? I have a friend, he's got a 16-month-old baby, ugly baby, and, uh, no, the doctor said keep the receipt on this one, and the babies... <laughs> And I just have dogs from a previous relationship. I don't know how to relate to this. And the baby's crawling around, and he had an accident in his diaper, you know. And, uh, you know, I said, rub his nose in it and put him out. <laughs> and the mother comes over and says, isn't that adorable? Brandon made a gift for Daddy. I'm thinking, this guy must be real easy to shop for on Father's Day. I know what to get this guy. Go ahead, Frank, open it up. I made it myself, Frank. And I hope you like it. 
<laughs> well, see, I don't relate too well to babies, you know, because I'm single. Those of you who know me, I'm very lonely. I belong to a group called Sex Without Partners. <laughs> and it's nice to see you here, sir. Thanks for coming to the show. I literally... <laughs> I just have dogs. Yeah, you too, sir. Yeah. My sheepdog is uh, 13 years old. Uh, yeah, which is very old. He falls now when I ride him. And, uh, oh, it's sad. And he, <laughs> what does Lauren Green say? Lauren Green says, this is old Duke. He's 110 to you and me. This is an old dog, 110 years old. And then what does Lauren do? He picks up a stick and he says, go get it, boy. <laughs> Duke's going, Lauren, I'm 110 years old. I'm using a walker, Lauren. This is like picking up a football and saying, go deep, Grandpa. I have, I have, you don't, <laughs> see, we screw up the dogs. See, I think the dogs are smarter than we give them credit for. We screw them up. They have a pooper scooper law in New York, right? You know about this? All right. So my friend has an apartment in New York, right? He keeps his dog cooped up all day long, right? He comes home at 6 p.m. The dog has cramps from holding it in, right? He lets his dog out. The dog does his thing. My friend scoops it up and takes it back into the house. The dog's got to be going, what the hell's going on here? I'm doing it outside. He's bringing it back into the house. I could cut out the middleman and do it in the kitchen. <laughs> do you think when you go to the bathroom, your dog's thinking, hey, 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 I drink out of that thing. <laughs> we do it to the dog. <laughs> I have an Irish setter, all right? You know about these dogs? Really freaky hyper dogs. When it thunders, she digs up the carpet to get underneath the carpet to get away from the thunder. Right? So the vet gives me these animal tranquilizers to give her. They're doggy downers or something. You know? I don't know what they are. They taste minty and they're real hard to swallow. <laughs> and she still goes under the carpet, but I don't care. You know, so... We're weird with animals. Have you ever been driving your car and there's a cow on the side of the road? Have you done And for no good reason, you stick your head out the car window and go, moo, and feel good about it for some... Like we expect the cow to be thinking, hey, there's a cow driving that car. How can he afford that? I go fishing, all right? I never catch any fish. I go fishing uh, in Lake Kachuma. Uh, you know this? It's Indian for no fish. And uh, I'm like the worst fisherman in the world. I'll tell you, I go fishing and uh, I, I went, first of all, I went to this place called the Alpine Trout Farm. Do you know these places? You know, these are like those private lakes. They stock them full of fish. They don't feed them for like two, three years. You know what I'm talking about? You go in there, fish are coming out on land looking for food. You can just go, I got a bass. I got them. I was using a Kinney's loafer. What were you using? I have no idea, right? I'm in Lake Kachuma. This is truly, I'm with my friend. We're trolling in the boat, right? We're going like 40 miles an hour in the lake. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think we're going too fast. I look back, the worm is water skiing, all right? <laughs> the worm is on one hook doing tricks, you know? The worm's gonna meet other worms, you know? And uh, so, <laughs> one of these professional fishermen, you know the guys with the Schlitz caps and all that? You guys should go to the end of the lake. The fish are spawning. So I'm figuring, great, you know, I'll be pulling them out two at a time. <laughs> well, what is spawning? I don't want to bother them when they're doing that. I don't want to be making love and someone dangles pizza over the bed, you know, and you go, <laughs> excuse me, honey, there's some pizza up there. <laughs> my dad taught me how to fish. Now, I've talked about my dad before. My dad is a blonde, and I love him very much. He takes me out on a charter boat. I'm eight years old, right, and you're proud you're with your dad. There's my dad casts off this boat and hooks a seagull, right? <laughs> Do you know about this? Because they'll hover over the boat, they'll grab the bait as it hits the water, and they'll take off, and they're hooked. And everyone's making fun of my dad. They're going, how'd you get that worm to fly? <laughs> you know, and he's strapped to the chair going, he's a beauty, isn't he, son? <laughs> Look at him fighting me. I'm going, cut the line, dad. There's a bird on there. <laughs> it's all he catches. I got pictures of him with a fishing rod and an owl in the other. <laughs> 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 Remember sex education in high school? What a waste. Teaches you nothing. We ha and they showed you these films on the venereal disease that just scared the hell out of you. <laughs> Remember? We had one girl in our class pass out because she recognized one of the guys in the film. <laughs> <laughs> there are actors.
Cheers, Betty. <laughs> How many single people do we have here? <laughs> yeah, we're all mostly single. All right, married folks applaud. All right. Half and half. Uh, what's left? Uh... It's 1984, don't be shy. Anyone living together but not married? Yeah, all right, that's a horrible thing. All right, uh, no, I'm joking with you. It's kind of like leasing with an option to buy, isn't it? Anyone divorced? You happy? It's a lot of people. You happy there, sir? Yeah, my friend of mine just got divorced. He had a divorce party, and they showed the wedding films in reverse with the couples walking away from each other. <laughs> I just broke up with my girlfriend, Patty, literally, because she just moved in with another guy. And, uh, yeah, I said, that's where I draw the line, you know, and, uh, you know, I dumped her. And, uh, sort of, I don't want to go out with two people. That's a big tab when you figure it out. But I'm in complete control. It's just been a short time. Have you guys ever had that feeling? You know, you're in complete control. Just when I thought I was never going to hear from her, I called her and uh, <laughs> begged her to come back. So now you got to go into bars and meet, and women should approach guys, because uh, we're easy. Isn't this true, guys? <laughs> this is the worst game. I went into a bar once, and I said to this girl, you want to go out? She said, no, I don't really find you attractive or interesting. I said, come on, quit playing games. What's the real? <laughs> I have heard every excuse for a woman not going to bed with me that exists. I swear to God, this one girl literally once said, look, not with this Falcon Island thing. <laughs> Well, I can understand that, Mrs. Thatcher. Um, ooh. I know nothing. I'm not good sexually. I just read this article that it's erotic to rub oil on the other person. Is this true? I don't know. I have a couple cans of Mobile One on my nightstand. 30 and 40 weight, because I don't know what time of the year it's going to happen. So, I'm walking out of a club, right? And uh, this girl approached me with her name and phone number on a piece of paper. Her name was Debbie, and she had an 800 number. <laughs> toll free, right? So, so we go out and I'm very nervous on a first date Some girl just told me I look like a cross between David Brenner and Jimmy Carter Is that true? Yeah, those are ugly people So I saw two ugly people kissing today Ooh, if you, you know who you are Don't, uh, I won't let my dog look at that Ernie, don't look, it's ugly people kissing What's going on there when ugly people are kissing? Are they looking at each other going, all right. Ooh, it's sickening. All right, so. So we go out, right? And we're in a dark restaurant, you know, and I'm trying to do everything right. You're wondering, does she like me? Do I like her? What's this going to cost? And, uh, and she had a beauty mark on her cheek, and I swatted it. Oh, the, uh, what, there was hair coming out of it. You know, it looked like legs. And, I said, there's something on your face, you know. And she started to bob and weave. I had to fake her with a right before I got her with a left. Good shot. <laughs> I got her. It's a hell of a shot. And, and I'm calling her John Boy. And, uh... Well, because you're nervous on a first date. No one acts themselves. A the woman doesn't eat a lot on a first date because she doesn't want the guy to think she's a pig. Isn't this true? By the fifth date, she's got the dessert card hooked to the back of the car. Am I right? She's got jeans that say U-Haul right across here. You're going, what do you pull that with? So, <laughs> but I'm cool. Wait, I'm ordering in French, right? And we're in a Chinese restaurant. And the waiter's going, why do you talk like that? Oh, don't make me look stupid. And he, <laughs> and he looks at her and goes, that's something on your face. And I went, no. Oh. It's a permit. And he let her have it. He went, whoa. And she was down. She was out cold. Thank God I brought some smelling salts because I thought there might be sex later. <laughs> so I said to the guy, I said, Wing Lu, get out of here. I don't know. All Chinese names sound the same to me. Wing Lu, Ching Lai. I was in Chinatown once. I yelled, hey, you. And half the people turned around, you know? <laughs> and they said, who, me? And the other half turned around. <laughs> so... <laughs> I said, get out of here, you're ruining everything. Then I opened up the fortune cookie and said, I peed in your rice. No. It was handwritten. They're not supposed to be handwritten, are they? No. I said, take this away and take the hot mustard sauce out of here, would you please? So, 
I get her out of there because every guy who's going by the table is going, there's something on your face, ma'am, you know, and she's looking like Jerry Cooney by the time the almond cookies come. And I had just read this article that women like the little boy quality in a man, so I'm sitting there chewing up my food and going, ah. You know, I'm throwing it at the waiter and sitting on a booster chair. So, so I get her out of there. We go to Disneyland, right? This is a great place because you can look macho because there's just little kids there. You push them around, tell them you got a job. So we go on this ride, it's a small world. Have you been on this ride, it's a small world? Anybody scared on this ride? Not a great ride. The worst thing about this ride is for the rest of your life in your head, you hear that darn song, don't you? For the rest of your life, it's a small world. Na, 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 Give me a break. Then I went on Pirates of the Caribbean. Best ride? Yeah. I'm home cleaning my house. I'm going, yo ho, yo ho. I'm making love. I'm going, yo ho, yo ho. And the girl's going, it's a small world. Na, 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 na. Nickelodeon has staked a claim for you. Primetime Saturday nights are yours. Sn I'm a macho guy. I have no hair on my chest because I'm, I'm a wimp and it ticks me off. All right. So if you're a macho guy, there's a guy, you got hair coming out of your shirt, sir, and this is a sickening thing. Do you have hair on your back? Ooh, trim it down. Really, do you? That's true. I always wanted to be one of those macho guys who can wear a turtleneck sweater and there's still hair coming out of the... the what do you call them? Uh, Italians. You know those... I love you guys. I'm envious of these guys. They need like two, three vasectomies. And, uh... <laughs> then you go to the beach and you see these guys with hair on their chest and on their back. Am I right? And you can't tell if they're coming at you or away from you. And it's gross. It's going on to the person next to them. Am I right? And the lifeguard's going, get out of the water. There's hair in the water. Clear the water. It's like kelp. You could drown in this stuff. I was in the hospital a year ago and they shave you. Now this is, you know what I'm talking about. All right, cause, yeah, because, you know, they shave everything, which is very weird because I was just visiting a friend of mine. And <laughs> what the hell's going on here? They said, it's shave day. We're shaving everybody. <laughs> so I've left you. We got off the subject. I'm with Debbie at Disneyland, right? She wants to go on the merry-go-round. Have you guys ever tried to act macho sitting on a merry-go-round? Am I right? There's no way. And all the horses are taken. I'm sitting on a swan, right? This, this big pink swan. It says sissy right on the side of the swan. Five-year-old kids are going, it's a sissy on the swan, mommy. And I'm going, I got a job. And I look bad, right? So I get her out of there. I'm driving her home in my new car, you know, which is when I start to wonder if there's going to be any sex, you know, and if I'm going to be involved. <laughs> I hate sitting out, and uh, I'm taking her back to my new house, right? I have a, I have a new house. I sold my old house for $85,000, and my landlord was real upset about it. He, he said, you were renting that house. I said, I forgot. I'll give you some of the money. I have this house. I don't even have my stuff unpacked. I don't have a clock in my bedroom. I dial the time. Have you ever done this? Here's a little tip for you, right? Because I never remember the number for time. If you wait late enough at night, you can dial any number and find out what time it is. <laughs> Twinkle is real late and go, hello, how are you? It's 4.15 in the morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, I get her home, right? You know Ernie, my dog, Oh, they're so embarrassing, aren't they? Oh, Debbie, this is Ernie. Ernie goes, how do you do, Debbie? And I go, oh. And then she says, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just a dog. I'm thinking, I got to get a costume. This is a great thing. <laughs> I'll put on a flea collar. What do you want me to do? Then the real lying starts. He must be smelling my dog. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> so, I'm on the couch. Are you with me on this so far? This is the good stuff now. I'm on the couch, right? I'm really getting into it. And uh, she comes into the room. <laughs> and catches me. I'm warming up. I'm 34 now. And uh, I need a kickstart, basically. I'm, I'm taking bee pollen. Is anybody into this bumblebee pollen? It's supposed to give you more lovemaking stamina. I've been taking like 2,000 milligrams a day. I swear. I woke up the other night. I was flinging myself against the screen door. Someone turn off the porch line. I'm hurting myself. I, 
Actually, I never thought of myself as old, and it's in your mid-30s that you start to look bad in the morning. Have you gone through this? Have you woken up yet and looked like your driver's license picture? <laughs> That's a scary thing when you go, this really isn't such a bad shot, really. We should order some of these, honey. Something happens from the time you go to sleep till the time you wake up. Isn't it weird? Seriously, it's like God comes in in the middle of the night and says, we're going to screw you up for the morning there. <laughs> Have you guys ever gone to bed with a woman and you wake up and she looks like Ed Sullivan? Have you gone? <laughs> and you're going, I got to get out of here, you know. And she's going, come on back here, Gary. Take a bow. Take a bow. I have 2,800 vision. Do you understand what I'm saying? I have my contact lenses in. These are my glasses. I have 2,800 vision, which means what you see at 20 feet. How does this work? I see at 20 feet, but 800 times worse? It means I can date just about anybody, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't these thick? Look at how nerdy I look. People go, my friends go, let me look at, let me look at those babies. And they go, you're blind, man. And everybody else goes, let me take a look. It becomes like a ride after a while. I said, you don't go up to a guy with a hearing aid and go, let me listen to that. <laughs> You're deaf, man. I have an eye doctor. I'm having fun with you. I love you a lot. I have an eye doctor. He swings that machine in front of me with all those lenses, tells me I got to wear this thing everywhere I go. I got to go into bars with this machine on and go, hey, girls, better or worse? <laughs> My eye doctor, I swear to God, is like 25 years old. He's a practical joker. He's got pictures of his family on his desk, all blurred. You go, I can't see a thing, doc. He's so weird. They're not supposed to shave you before the exam, are they? What, my eyes are up here, doc. Gee. I have a dentist. He's 26 years old. He's got this nitrous oxide, the laughing gas. Do you know? Oh, it's great. Oh, he's got a happy hour from 5 to 7. <laughs> he shoots you full of Novocaine, right? This is what happens. Your whole face is numb. He waits until you can't feel anything, and then he says, Would you spit, please? And you go, <laughs> It's going all over me here. And there's always a beautiful dental assistant going, That's attractive, Mr. Shanley. When you want to go out sometime, I, I, I'll wear the bib, I swear to God. <laughs> so we're on the couch, right? We're sitting on the couch. Now there's this awkward moment, right? And, and the guy, ne and I'm very shy. I don't know when to make my move. And the woman never gives you a clear signal that it's okay to come on. Isn't this true? And I need a clear signal. I need a woman with flashlights going. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm going to sit there, you know, so... We're necking, I got my arm around, I'm whispering romantic things in her ear, things like, I got cash. And, <laughs> and it's working, I'm getting turned on, and, uh, and we spawned, and uh, I call it spawning. You know, there's a lot of flopping around and gasping for air there. And <laughs> Actually, I'm great in bed. I, I, I never fall out. I, uh, I have guardrails. I have a hospital bed, basically. <laughs> I have a mirror above my bed, and on it it says, objects are larger than they appear. <laughs> Do you get it, man? Do you get that? So, sex isn't that important. I honestly don't believe it. I mean, I, I, I think the close feeling is, is more important. That's why I like it when a woman says, I was close. Then I know she had a good time. <laughs> and they all say that. I'm not just bragging. I... <laughs> It went great. Have you ever made love so good the next day you have aftershocks? Have you ever had it? You're just walking down the street and you go, whoa. I gotta call her. I've never had that. I... <laughs> See, half of you huh, are married. You don't go through this uh, dating tension. This is what I noticed for my folks. 40 years together, huh? And they can just be themselves. Isn't this true about your folks? I mean, my dad can scratch himself. It's okay. <laughs> you don't do this when you're dating. You become a father. They say, Mr. Shandling, you've had a baby boy. He goes, thank God, I can scratch. <laughs> Fathers don't care. My father comes to the breakfast table like this. What's for breakfast this morning? I'm going, Dad, we're eating here. Gee. Could you put a robe on or something there, Dad? <laughs> Just one meal, Dad. Dad don't care. 
you be talking to my dad, he takes his car keys out of his pocket and sticks them in his ear. And you're, I'm going, are you starting your head or what, Dad? He said, I must be, son. I'm backfiring here. <laughs> Dads don't care. I bought my father bikini underwear for Father's Day, right? Then I realized you don't want to see your dad in bikini underwear. It's gross, am I right? He, he, he th and he thinks he looks like John Travolta in these babies, right? He looks like Orson Welles, basically. They don't even fit him. I'm going, both legs have to go in there, Dad. It, you want to see him in his boxer shorts. This is a dad's uniform, those old loose ones. You know the ones I'm talking about where he turns quick, but they stay right where they are? They get higher each year, don't they? It's like the rings on a tree. You can tell how old he is by where the elastic band mark is. I hadn't seen him in a year. I said, how are you, Dad? He said, I'm fine, son. You're on your head, Dad. Then after he eats, all dads do this. They unbutton their pants, unzip their fly, and sit there at the table with their pants open. Am I right? Going, that was a great dinner. And you can judge how good the meal is by how far down his zipper is. Am I right? One time he stood up and his pants fell to the ground and we were at a restaurant. And uh, all the other fathers turned and said, wow, what is that guy eating? <laughs> they know. You've still got time to pick the best group video performances. Tune in Tuesday for the number to call and voice your choice for the VH1 Music Video Hall of Fame. Sponsored by RCA. Parents are so funny. My folks live in Tucson, Arizona. I called them long distance because I was excited. My name is on the cover of TV Guide this week. And, uh, well, thank Well, no, maybe. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Maybe it's just on mine. It's on that little address label, but... I didn't tell them that part. I... <laughs> You ever call your folks long distance, they each get on an extension phone, right? And talk to each other. I don't say a damn thing, you know what I'm talking? I hung up and called back, the line was busy. And they have, they have a bowl of wax fruit on their coffee table. I guess this is in case some mannequins come over. I'm not eating this stuff, Mom. I had some candles, I'm full. Thank you anyway. My dad, boy, he takes that newspaper, goes into the bathroom. You don't see him for two, three years. Did you? <laughs> Men are different than women in the bathroom. Am I right? Have you ever, I mean, for, you go to a restaurant, you see women all get up for, at, at once to go to the bathroom. Four, five, six at a time. Am I right, guys? And it takes them forever, and then they come back, and what's the complaint? They go, there was a line in there. <laughs> well, you're going in platoons, lady. Space it out a little bit. Men have the guts to go solo. Am I right? And we don't care if the door's wide open at home. We'll go to the bathroom, am I right? We'll just, and if we don't care if Wide World of Sports is watching us. We'll go, hey, we're number one. <laughs> Women close the bathroom door, and even if you live with them, they lock the bathroom door like you're gonna come in in the middle of it and throw a cat on them or something. <laughs> Play with the kitty, honey. <laughs> and, when they, and when they come out, they close the bathroom door behind them. Am I right? And they go, don't go in there. Uh, Let's go to Europe, honey. Let it... <laughs> this is the key to relationships, is just letting it go and being yourself. I have a friend who's been dating a girl four years, and he's finally getting married. And I said, how come? He said, I just can't hold my gas in any longer. <laughs> Isn't this true? You don't do that when you're single. You get married. You go, listen to this one, honey. Come on in here. Bring the kids. Circle around, kids. Dad's gonna tell you a story. Is it the same with a woman? I never heard a woman, wait a minute, you know, cut one in my life. And I was living with this girl and I smelled something. I'm going, what the hell is that? It's not me. And my dog's going, uh-uh, uh-uh, Gary. It's the chick. Get her out of the house. You guys have been great. I can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. Y'all sit there. Have a good flight. Thank you. I think this is going to be a very lucky flight for me. 
Wasn't that the guy on the flight insurance machine? No. Anyway, I hope you had a good time. I enjoyed being with you a lot. And now I'm going home alone, you know, which is the worst, because everybody's at home with somebody else having a good time, and I'll be with me. And you know what that's like now. You know what would be great is if you could go home with me. Would you like to do that? Come on, I'll do the cooking, I'll clean. You can use my room. Come on, I have cable television. Come on, you can even use... Hey, hey, where are you going? Hey, 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 where are you going? Hey, where's everybody going?